From the Tie Cats Audio Network, this is Task and Twos. Welcome to Task and Twos, first episode of the 2022 season. I'm Luke Tasker, and of course, Andy Fantuz, uh, my buddy and my teammate, and now my teammate with the Tie Cats Audio Network. Uh, Andy, great to see you. Great to kick off our uh, show for the season. Yeah, it's great to be here. I'm uh, I'm pumped to get this rolling again, and um, you know we've had had a few times together so far on on the broadcast, but first time in the uh, in the studio, so this is great. Yeah, this will be good. We're going to do something. Task and Twos will kind of have a couple uh, special episodes throughout the season. Might bring on some guests and uh, to kick us off this year, uh, the Tie Cats, who will be playing uh, at Tim Hortons Field this Friday against Edmonton. Uh, they're going to have an alumnus of distinction uh, at the game, uh, and uh, this week is Dave Stala, the Hamilton uh, favorite and CFL uh, great. Uh, Dave Stala uh, will be on the field and be part of our broadcast with the Ticats Audio Network and a couple different roles, and you'll kind of hear him and see him throughout the day on Friday, but Dave, we're, uh, we're happy to have you as a guest on the show, and man, congrats uh, on being honored this weekend. Thanks a lot, man. And did I hear this is a first show, so I'm the first round draft pick right now? You are first overall, as I always. Like this. No, it would be great. Uh, the team asked me to, you know, come out and join uh, the team, uh, welcoming, you know, running out in the field. Uh, the big thing is I get to bring my daughter, Chloe, uh, just an experience for her. She, you know, she's been part of some of the stuff that we've done. But, again, it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun for her. And, again, for me to come back and, and see the fans, it's definitely going to be exciting. That's cool, man. The, uh, how old's your daughter, Chloe? Uh, she's nine. So, so she, she's going to run on the field with you? Yeah, well, hopefully she doesn't trip, but I got her, man. <laughs> uh, she'll be. Yeah. I remember one time you guys were out there with the flag uh, a few years back, and it was just a surprise. We were just looking down on the field saying, what? wait a minute, is that Stala and his daughter? <laughs> yeah, a couple of years ago, so I brought her. It's always, you know, it's always fun for the kids. I, I got Noah that's two and a half. I wish well, but I think he's still too young. I'm not sure how he to react to that kind of um, you know, in front of him. So I don't know if he's been in public places over the last couple of years like that. So, but again, it's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, you know, it's it's a big game for the Tie Cats. I think that's uh, it's a, it's almost pretty close to a must win. No, would you guys say? Yeah, it's about time, man. I I mean, Edmonton's zero three too. Like it's time to get one going here before a long uh, stretch of East games. But we all had our. Uh, Fair share of slow starts in Hamilton. We were just saying before we press the record button, we we only are we're all together for one year, huh? 2013, and I feel like Stala's presence lingered for a very long time after uh, after he had uh, left uh, Hamilton. To his remember uh, training camp 2014, uh, Stala was now uh, no longer a tie cat, <laughs> and the cheer at practices at the McMaster field was where's Stala? Where's Stala? <laughs> Bakari Grant would, uh, would, was the, uh, would, would lead that, uh, cheer most days, but yeah, <laughs> D- sticky. You kind of, you had a, uh, you had a real lasting, uh, presence in the locker room. No, it was always about, you know, it's always about a good time, right? Uh, when you I, when I first started playing Don Matthews out of Montreal, he always said, once you cross that blue line, once you step on the field, just perform for me. Whatever you do before that, it doesn't really matter. Although you still prepare properly and, you know, you still have fun. But, uh, you know, you twos and, you know, Luke, you guys know I was always the guy that wanted to have fun. I always do the prank and mess with guys and do different shit and, you know, things to have fun, right? It's, it's the locker room and you always remember uh, the games are, you know, it's business. You got to get, you know, the work done. But, uh the locker room is probably the most thing that is probably missed uh, as a player. I would say, Dave, uh, what were you? We had ahead, a couple Andy. different chapters of your career. You had the, you know, you were part of that big. I want to call it the three-headed receiving monster in uh, Montreal. Was it Cahoon and, and uh, Joel and yourself, uh, Copeland? Yeah, it was Copeland Cahoon. Uh, there was Kwame Kavil and then myself there. Yeah, the, the, the oh yeah, years. four I guess. And then you came to Hamilton, and uh, so just tell us a little bit about your, uh, you know, your experience in, in those different chapters. So Montreal here, and then in Toronto. Well, I, th- I think the the biggest one was a learning curve for me in Montreal. You know, growing up and, and, and you know being able to play with those guys, Calhoun, AC, and Copeland. Uh, you know, growing up and learning from those guys. That was a learning curve, and 
you know, 05, we had a, I had a great year. So did you. I think you were player of the year. Me and you battled it out and you got that award. Canadian player of the year in 05. What year was that? 05, 05 I think. No, you know? I was against you in uh, 2010. <laughs> oh, sorry. That was 10. Yeah, that was then. But in 05, I had 1,000 yards. So, you know, I had a pretty good, you know, pretty good season. But, you know, uh, Calhoun was there. So I tried to replicate what he did. So I tried to learn those years from... So from my first five, seven years, I was just trying to get better. And then, you know, in 07, 08, I had that ankle foot injury where I didn't play many games. I played one year, you know, one game in two years. You know, then I had to make a chance. And Hamilton was kind of like, you know, you become that vet. You become that guy. So over the, you know, the next few years, the team started changing around. You were one of those guys that the guys are looking up to you. Um, so, you know, you just try to play that role. And as you get older, as, you know, as you guys understand, you know, guys lean on you more as you get older. You know, you're not leaning on the other guys. So that was probably more. And then the last couple of years, I just try to, you know, my last two, three years, I still thought I had it to, you know, be able to play and had a chance to go to Montreal, play another year and, and play in Toronto, which every Hamilton fan hated. But, you know, just like, but it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's football, right? Uh, as you get older, I think I was done when I was 35, you know, you just look for the next opportunity and, you know, you know that's what came up and, you know, I played a couple extra years, uh, you know, made some money only on 10 catches a year. But, uh, you know, it was a good ending <laughs> to my career. And, you know, now I'm still back in Hamilton doing, still in Hamilton, five minutes from the stadium, doing what I love. So, you know, it's it's been a long ride, 13 years, but it's it's been a good one. That's cool, man. The... Uh... <clears throat> yeah, the uh, Speedy B had to make the same uh, the same uh, transition down the uh, down to the uh, arch rival there. Um, I was talking about me and Andy went head to head when he was uh, up east. I think he was the West Canadian Player of the Year, and I was the East. And I think Andy, what'd you have? Week fourteen, two hundred fifty-five yards in one game. What was it? You know, <laughs> remember? That? I think yeah. that's what set you away from me right there. That one game kind of pulled pulled, pulled away everything. But that was yeah. that was a great bad man. Yeah, thanks, bud. We, uh, I, I, I don't know if the listeners realize, but at least in the last, um, you know, the recent history, I think the three people on this call would be up for uh, best hands in the Thai Cats uh, in the in recent history, and, and, and I'm not sure which order, but I, I think most people would probably put Sticky number one. But and no offense to White Lightning and White Lightning Junior here, but uh, <laughs> pretty pretty uh, legendary set of mitts in this in this group call here. It's pretty awesome. I remember uh, my first weeks up there was the th- when we were playing at Guelph, 2013, and like I was so new, I was still getting to know like the guys in my own position group. Like this was I was this was first or second game, and Sticky, you had like a catch. I actually think there was a double pass involved in this game too, but you had a catch from Hank Burris that was like way out on the far sidelines of Guelph, and and like a classic Sticky snag with one hand in traffic. It was like, it was wildly impressive. And Andy, this was in, you know, you were, you were prime, prime of, of the career. So these, you two were the, were the, were the, uh, were the vets that I was looking up to right when I first came in in 2013. It was great. Well, you talk. This is what I was talking about. Same with Calhoun, right? Guys I was looking up to when I was growing up, try to copy their routes and do the things they were doing properly. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, that's you guys. Because I had to come up here and when I came up to learn the waggle, it was you guys who were the masters of the waggle. Like on when we that was the year we were practicing McMaster, and I remember it vividly. Like starting, like understanding that it wasn't just a head start. You know, it was a tool to use. You know, in in your angles and your speed, and and you you guys were uh, you guys were uh, sort of the tops at that uh, at, at a perfect time for me coming up from a, from a, an NFL camp. The. The uh, the double pass you referred to, I remember Stala, you bombed one to me that game, and uh, just in the end zone, and I did not catch it. <laughs> it was like oh. <laughs> it was a challenge catch, but I, I still should have had it. I felt pretty bad because you you uh, threw a cannon on that one. I did remember that now. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, too. It was the best best uh, best play of my career. Still, was the pass that you and I connected on in the uh, Eastern Final in uh, Ottawa. I think that was awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. Stala, walk us through the. Uh, if you if you go to Google Dave Stala, about fifty percent of the content that comes up is touchdown celebrations. Give me some of the, uh, give me some of your favorite in your memory of uh, some of your celebrations. I mean, I always try to come up with something differently. I probably the, I mean, you know, the best one is probably the hacky sack that I did in, in, uh, in Saskatchewan. Uh, I think it was during the the World Cup was going on, and I was a soccer player growing up, so. 
being able to juggle soccer ball is pretty easy. But then, you know, I started practicing with the football and it was something I was able to do. And it, it turned out pretty good because I could have gone the other way, right? If, you know, one run <laughs> gone the other way. But I think probably one of the best things that was because it hit my favorite show, PTI, down in the States. That's, you know, got a million views on YouTube and stuff like that. But it was always something different. Again, this is the messing around stuff. Uh, I, I The next year I started telling jokes on the sidelines. You know what I mean? Just come up with stupid stuff that people are like, what is this guy doing? Just kind of those things, the Oski yeah. Weekly, the things that people don't know. I still got a few celebrations that no one's ever done that I still want to do. I think I want to pass it on to some guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, man. If you haven't YouTubed uh, the the uh, Hacky Sack Touchdown Celebration, which probably every Hamiltonian has seen that a couple times, but if you haven't, definitely check that out. That's that's a classic from Dave Sala, uh, 2010, I think it was. But uh, I remember I remember in the locker room at Jarvis, uh, the Halloween <laughs> sticky goes all out for Halloween. Let's say that. Let's just say that you want to you want to share your uh, your uh, uh, Halloween experiences. Yeah, I don't. It's always it's always fun in games. So I'm always a clown, clown. So I mean, I guess was it, what year? No, I had one coach kick me out of there. I think it was Toronto. <laughs> got Milanovic got pissed off. I was in meetings. I think we might have lost the game that week. I got it. Nine o'clock came in and I sat down in a meeting in the clown suit, right? And he's like, get out of here. Go get changed. But I <laughs> I can do baby. Like I can do animals. I can do flowers. I can do uh, balloon animals. So it's like entertainment. Um, here in Hamilton, I actually had a friend that was a, like an artist. So I would get up at five, six in the morning. She would do all my face makeup before we went to the locker room so it looks good and guys it's all about entertainment it's it's all about fun and games man that's that's what life's about man that is awesome so <laughs> so you got kicked out of the locker room when you were that's the one yeah the, the, in montreal we had a in montreal they had that uh they had a contest so basically i was i spray painted my whole self gold and put a box on the bottom of my shoes basically you stand like a baseball bat and broke like a <laughs> But yeah, I know. You're talking about. <laughs> I got an old man who I my head, so I shaved my head like an old man, like this. Put a yeah. back, and then uh, with a uh, cr- uh, a cane in my hand. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> we can keep going, guys. That's great stuff, man. <laughs> How much so, trouble did you get in when uh, when you took off your practice jersey on the way to McMaster on the bus and gave it to somebody on the side of the street? Who then went on to wear it every single day for the next three months, uh, but you didn't have a practice jersey that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the guy on yeah by Ray Street. I do remember that now, Andy. Yeah, <laughs> I was there every day, and he was asking for stuff. So, was it me that threw it out, or somebody's messing with me? What happened? Uh, no, it was you. I, okay. I think it was you. Yeah. <laughs> on the way to another. practice, too, not the way home from practice. No, it's great. <laughs> So. That's cool, dude. The uh, uh, Stala, you you have a you have a pretty well known but a really special uh, life story, and just kind of how how you and your family came to Canada, how you got involved in football, and and that led to the CFL. You know, you've been removed from from playing for a couple seasons now, but does getting honored at the at the stadium this weekend? Are you thinking back at all, or does it make you sort of reminiscent about sort of how far you you've come, and maybe how unlikely? Uh, your successful career was uh, uh, anything to say about about just how far you've come? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I I grew up in Hamilton, so as a Hamilton kid, to be able to play in Hamilton, um, in the stadium, um, to have a career for 13 years it definitely has been an honor. Never knew this was going to happen, honestly. Um, just took a path. Went to St. Mary's in Halifax, got drafted. Um, always worked my butt off. I just I know that. Um, but, yeah, always coming back here. I've been away from football for a long time now, for the last five, seven years. When I was done, for, you, you guys know football is there. you got to give it all, right? So you wake up to eat, to work out, to run, to do everything, to, to get right for the season. So I just needed a break from football. It's nice to get back around it. We still have season tickets on, you know, on the 50-yard line as a family. Um, but to be able you know, to be honored and be out on the field with the players, with some of the alumni, it's definitely an honor. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And, um you know, the fans, it's always about the fans. The fans always been great here. Uh, they've always been nice and welcoming and, and rowdy, right, and pretty crazy over here. So it's always back, and, you know, it's awesome to come back and have this opportunity, I guess. 
Very special, man. The uh, Obviously, Hamiltonians, anyone who's taken a drive down King Street will know a little bit about uh, maybe what you're what you're doing now. But uh, why don't you share with the listeners kind of what's uh, what's been next after the after the football life uh, for Dave Stala? Well, it's, it's always been difficult for players to figure out what they're doing after football. Um, fortunately, I was able to, you know, get into some renovations and, and, and some investment properties. But over the last couple of years, we, we were able to open up a store downtown Hamilton on King and Wentworth. Uh, so we supply small builders, renovators and contractors, basically interior finishes. So, you know, we do takeoffs for building materials such as trim, doors, flooring, um, all your once you get your drywall up, all your interior finishes. So. Um, there's a need for it. There's no store like it downtown. We have two warehouses downtown Hamilton, five minutes from the stadium, two right across the street from our high school, uh, right where I grew up. So it was important for us to open up downtown where my roots are, where we grew up, and you know give another service to the people down here in Hamilton. What's missing? Um, we're also doing a, a very cool initiative for uh, community involvement. Um, we're doing a, call, a program called Dollar for Doors. So right now, uh, we're raising every door we sell. Uh, we, we, we donate a dollar to a community recipient, recipient. And then we have a community partner that matches it. And if the client wants to donate, they can also do so. Um, I, I think we're over like 1500 bucks for the, for the last quarter. Um, it's our first, first run at it right now. So it's, uh, it's a new initiative we're starting for Dollar for Doors. But I think it's, you know, it's going to pick up some, uh, some, some rhythm over the next few months and over the next couple of years. But it's, it's a, it's a cool thing to be able to do something I was given. I was never, you know, people were, did a lot of things for us here, gave, gave us a lot of stuff to, to be able to play football, to, you know, succeed in this neighborhood. So we should be able to give back to, you know, the kids that need stuff and the people that need different, um, I guess, uh, different uh, avenues. Yeah, that's great, man. Uh, a, giving back to the community is always something you've been a big, 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 uh, big part of. Um, even at the Grey Cup last year, you threw a couple nice parties in your in your new uh, in your new space there. Um, so yeah, definitely go check out Stala Renovations if if you haven't seen it yet. Um, Stala, I know very cool, man. I know you're a big uh, foodie as well. You got any um, got any favorites in in Hamilton that you'd recommend for a different cuisine? Yeah, a bunch of places in Hamilton. I mean, over the last couple of years, as you guys know, it's grown. Um, I'm going to go to Lock Street, probably in one of my, my boys' place. West Town is a staple over there. It's been there for 30 years. Good food, good people, and, uh, you know, you always get a sports game on there. But uh, also Rugatino is a n- nice little Italian spot on, on Lock Street, another friend of mine that owns it. But just good atmosphere, and, and Lock Street's a good one. But even King William's another, you know, you got about 10 restaurants. They closed the city down, so... It's becoming more of a foodie place, and I like going out. I like you know having a good time and, and enjoying myself. That's great, man. The uh, well, congrats, Sticky man. It's uh, well deserved, and excited to see you and your and your daughter uh, run out on the field for uh, uh, before the Tie Cats this season. Uh, you were a great one, man. Great uh, great teammate uh, for me as a younger player. Both you guys, uh, uh, Sticky and uh, White Lightning Senior, you guys were both uh, great for for me in my career. Um, but uh, Dave, we'll see you out there uh, this weekend. And Tie Cat fans, be sure to uh, check out and be there before the uh, before the kickoff, so you can see Dave Stahl on the field. And uh, if you're not at the game and you tune into the Tie Cats Audio Network, uh, Dave will be joining the broadcast in some capacities throughout the game, and we'll be kind of. Uh, uh, going back and forth with him throughout the night. So looking forward to a great uh, Tie Cat weekend. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Awesome, man. This is great. Thanks, guys. Thank you.